Uh, my name is Vic, and uh, I'm a graduate research assistant here at the Media Lab. Um, but prior to this, I was working at Magic Leap on their uh, AR headset that was re recently released about a month ago. Um, so I wanted to, I prepared this presentation because I'm really excited about sort of the hardware behind AR. And there's a lot of attention around sort of like AR applications and how we can use it. But, you know, at the forefront of it, we got to really improve the way it actually works. And so that's what I hope to do, and I hope to kind of give you guys a little overview. And a lot of this stuff is something you may be already familiar with, but um, I want to kind of step through these, the different kind of platforms of AR that we've been seeing so far. As you already have seen, um, phone and tablet AR is already a kind of a mainstream thing. And uh, companies like Snapchat and uh, Apple AR Kit and Google have already started announcing these kind of platforms to build these AR um, kind of experiences. And what's really important is that uh, I think what, what I'm mostly interested in is like the experience side of it, is how can we improve the experience for the user and how can we better make that um, more accessible to everyone. Um, the next thing is a wearable AR displays. And you might have seen, obviously, Google Glass and Lumis Vision, um, which debuted at CES 2018 uh, this past week. And you know, these displays are just simple displays that are projecting information in front of you while wearing this headset. And then the third kind of a field, this is wearable mixed reality displays. Um, we have Microsoft HoloLens, you have Magic Leap, and other companies that are kind of pushing forward this realm. And as you can see, as you step through these different fields, you get more and more immersive as you begin to sort of um, test out these different technologies. So I'll start with kind of phone and tablet AR, just a brief kind of overview. You've already known about this. But what is interesting about kind of this um, kind of technology, it's to me, it's very accessible, right? So you can use your thumb. You can basically, like with Pokemon Go, with Snapchat, you can basically sort of drag around objects in your field, sort of on your phone, uh, really like quickly, you know, simply, and it's really easy to kind of build. Um, and what's kind of cool about this is that um, just by adding a sort of a shadow under the object, like for Snapchat's world lenses, you can make it feel more immersive, right? Um, and these are this is an area I think it's. It is very important, and a lot of companies are obviously using kind of these uh, um, tablet and phone-based AR systems to kind of show um, their products. And obviously, Apple debuted their um, AR toolkit or AR kit, which you can use your iPad or other Apple devices to look at these new experiences. So this is an experience um, created by Wingnut AR, which is uh, by director Peter Jackson. And basically, it's an experience where you can um, sort of play this game or witness a game kind of unfolding in front of you on a tabletop. And this is something that we've already seen and, and will continue to see. And obviously, this is an app on your phone that you can sort of measure uh, like your frame uh, width or height. And this is a very useful app. That's something that you can carry around your pocket. You don't have to carry a ruler around. And um, this is something that the mobile AR is sort of like um, very good at doing. And, but the thing is that these the technologies are great, but you know, they're kind of restricted to the phone or tablet. And uh, they're not really immersive. You can't really step into the, uh, the, the kind of like the experience. And then you kind of go into this whole AR headsets kind of uh, direction. And you have kind of, the, kind of the focus behind that is sort of what enables that is these kind of optical displays. Um, like, for example, Google Glass is, you know, they have like a prism-based display in the top right corner of your eye that kind of projects the image to the eye. And you have um, Loomis, which is doing a similar kind of waveguide slash uh, reflective display. And you have um, uh, companies like Magic Leap or, you know, Digital Lens is working on this um, sort of a, um, uh, pupil expansion technique, which is sort of uh, a waveguide-based display. And this is something that uh, we're already familiar with, but this is ways to kind of enable this AR platform for optical see-through, so wearable displays. So um, I want to first talk about like Google Glass, because I know you've already you're already familiar with this. But the thing is, this is a very interesting product. I think um, they, they had the right intention, but I think it just it was marketed kind of not the right way. Um, and so what's cool about this is um, you can see a lot of information in the top right corner of your sort of field of view, but when you're talking to someone, your eye is kind of looking at a different point, and so it kind of doesn't um, improve the conversation that you're having with another friend. But, you know, it's a very simple display, just a small, you know, transparent prism that's sort of in the corner, and the image plane is very close, so you can sort of see images like right here. But at the same time, you know, if you're like driving a motorcycle or something like that, you know, it's kind of dangerous because you're, you're focusing at sort of this close plane in front of you, but then you're also looking at the directions in, ahead. 
Um, so the idea was good, but at the same time, like the sort of the technology wasn't really there. And I think to make this more immersive, you got to expand that field of view and also make the, the image plane a little bit at different distances. Um, but it's a, it was a great start. And um, if you might have seen Loomis Vision, which is a really cool company, they build like optical lenses for AR platforms. And uh, basically this headset is a reflective waveguide that um, is about 40 degrees of field of view. And what is neat about this is, is you, if you look through it, it's not like Google Glass. It's the image is sort of in the center, and you can sort of experience your, your uh, kind of uh, environment while looking at the image that's being displayed through the uh, waveguide. Um, and in this case, their image plane is at infinity. So you're not looking at like somewhere close to you, but somewhere like further away. So it's sort of like, um, as you can see in the next, I'll show like a video, but um, the, the information sort of um, in the world as of like kind of right here. Um, so here is an example from like last year at CES where they're looking through this waveguide and you can see this kind of a dragon kind of floating around through this transparent display. This is very, very cool. I think uh, this is the kind of technology that I'm really interested in because um, that's really pushing the forefront of like optical see-through technologies. And, um, and so they're improving upon this, but as you can see, the, there's a lot of leakage of light happening. The, there's a discoloration of the, of the dragon. There's a lot of like double images going on. And that's, that's like inherent to sort of like this waveguide technology that's being used. And I think there's a lot of uh, research and development going on in improving that. And so this is just simple AR display. So you just see information. There's no environment mapping. But um, you know, it adds content in the real world with no sort of real understanding of the environment. And there's like these single focal planes and there's not much of a depth of field going on. And so it's great, but at the same time, it's still not like really, really, really immersive, right? So um, the last part I want to kind of mention is these mixed reality headsets. So, um, and this is an area that like, I guess is, we, we all want to have like a pair of glasses that we can wear every day and like things are sort of just merged with the, the physical world, like our information sort of augmented on top of the physical world. And I think that's where the mixed reality sort of comes in. Again, this is not the only way to kind of do things, but I think this is one way to, to really experience AR. And mobile is good, you know, simple AR displays is great, but this is also fits a need for other, um, other like, uh, circumstances. So the first thing is, you know, HoloLens. They, they announced an amazing headset, and I think this is um, this technology was obviously one of the one of the few things that I think inspired me to sort of enter into the realm of like augmented reality. Um, and so they're using sort of these stacked waveguides uh, technique, and they've got 35 degrees of view, and it's very narrow, right? Um, but you know, this is an area that's constantly being in development. And so, um, but what really kind of uh, made the experience great for them was um, the ability to merge their Connect platform with their waveguide optics, which allowed them to kind of create this sort of a um, immersive reality experience. And that really good depth mapping kind of enabled them to do that. And uh, there's a lot of work being done right now on both sensor technologies and uh, waveguide or optics or other kinds of holographic techniques to kind of enable that to happen. And it's very expensive. So this stuff is hopefully going to come cheaper, but you know, we're, we're not at the moment we're going to wear this kind of nice pair of gla glasses anytime soon. So um, that's why like, I want to really push this area forward as kind of part of my research. Um, so this is an experience seen through um, HoloLens. Um, on the left, you see sort of this developer. He's in New York City Central Park, and he built this application. He's wearing a, a HoloLens headset, and he's walking through Central Park kind of playing Mario in sort of the physical environment, um, which is, I think, a really cool experience, and that it kind of shows what is possible with mixed reality headsets. Um, over on the top right, uh, the user kind of recorded a 3D capture of them talking to their kid, and they put a hologram of that on their sort of a coffee chair or coffee table chair. And that, that kind of uh, experience is something it's, you, you don't really get you know, every day. And at the bottom right, you have like a game that's going on where you see the, uh, over, the kind of coins kind of spilling over the table and things are sort of like happening in real time. And this experience is great. And I think this is where a lot of sort of mixed reality stuff is coming in. Um, and there's going to be a lot more work going on in this realm. Um, but at the same time, you see the quality of it is not like the best, right? There's, uh, you, don't, you don't notice the, the lack of field of view in this, in this, and also you don't really uh, notice sort of like the um, occlusion going on as well, because there's a, a lot of minute parts like shadows that are really important to making the experience re like really, really crucial to your um, sort of the development of the process. 
Um, so this is a Magic Leap 1 where we worked on this um, this past year, um, helped build the system, and uh, it's it's a really cool platform. And I think uh, um, when, when it comes out to the users, I think you guys will really get to experience it and play with it. Um, and, and I think, uh, this is another one of those mixed reality headsets, right? Um, it's not like a pair of glasses. It, we all want it to be a pair of glasses, but it's still it's getting there. It's, it will get there eventually. Um, they're using this concept of digital light fields, and it's um, also doing environment mapping and uh, a lot of visual, visual perception going on. And uh, if I kind of um, talk more about light fields, I guess, the idea of a light field is something that sort of creates this effective depth of field, right? So you can allow objects to be in focus sort of at some areas and appear to appear blurry in other areas. And I think that's very important to kind of create this sort of immersive experience. And um, you know, there's light fields, there's holographic displays, um, and these are all ways to kind of bring that um, quality of experience to the user. Um, these are demos that were given through Magic Leap Platform that were sort of public in the past year, uh, past several years. Um, in the top left, you can notice like, you know, we partnered with um, Lucas Films, and you can see that the experience where R2D2 is kind of displaying an image on your coffee table. Um, and uh, in, the in the bottom right, you notice a robot sort of kind of, kind of waving at you, and as you look around it, the, the occlusion, you can notice the end of the table sort of blocking the robot. So these, those details are very, very important when you're displaying information in sort of this physical environment. You want the user to actually feel like those images are there. Um, and that's part of, part of it's enabled by light fields and, and holographic um, technology. And so um, that's kind of like where I come from is sort of looking at, um, um, looking at sort of ways that we can improve mixed reality headsets. And as you can see, there's still a lot of constraints, right? So field of view is still important. What's really, really important is the efficiency of the light that goes in. So when you're displaying an information through uh, um, some display, the light that goes in has to, you want to maximize that light that comes out, right? So um, that, that efficiency is very, very important. And the less efficiency you have, obviously the more power it takes to support that platform. And looking at new display technology, looking at new ways to do illumination is very critical. Um, if you're doing like waveguide optics, you know, you want to optimize your gratings to be highly efficient. <laughs> so um, brightness, that's part of that as well. Like you want to have as much nits you want from your display so you can take it out into the real world and like play in the sun. But right now, a lot of the systems, like the reason why HoloLens has a huge sort of visor there is to help you see the image better, right? Um, I mean, it looks interesting, but you know, if you take out that shield, um, the image, I guarantee, will be a lot dimmer. Um, and obviously, the cost of manufacturing is very, very important. Um, because right now, like, we can optimize our work on silicon to make, trans uh, to make transistors in very, very small like, kind, of, uh, uh, kind of regions. But can you, do, can you do that same thing with photonics? And I think uh, that area of photonics is very, very uh, ripe for sort of uh, development and uh, looking at new substrates that enable um, uh, these kind of technologies on photonic systems. So what's kind of next, right? So I'm here right now, I do a lot of research, and, uh, and I'm really curious about sort of like what are new areas of technology that can sort of push this forward. Um, and so one thing is sort of looking at new waveguide technology to enable a larger field of view. Uh, one is to kind of have more focal planes in your system. As you, can, as you saw in the second part with AR displays, they have like a single focal plane, so you're looking either really close to your face or kind of farther away. But if you have multiple focal planes in your system, you can basically enable a sort of depth of field kind of ability. And uh, variable optics is very important too. If you can dynamically change your focal distance of your optic, then you can basically display content at multiple depths. Um, and then you have, um, Metamaterials, I think this is a really, really cool area. Um, so the idea of metamaterials is that you can fabricate your own lens, a thin lens that does the work of a large bulky lens. And you do this with like sort of nanostructures. Um, so this is a graphic from University of Toronto about several years ago where they essentially created a thin lens with a long focal length. And then a thick lens, um, or there, there's a thin lens with long focal length, a thick lens with a short focal length, and then they made a thin metamaterial lens with extremely short focal length. So by creating custom lenses sort of in, in the nanostructures, you can basically enable um, different, focal, different focal planes in your display. And 
I think also illumination is very important. As I mentioned about like the light efficiency, how do you enable sort of a better projection systems in your displays that enable um, like lar give you a lar lot of brightness as well as a lot of efficiency? And you know, looking at fiber displays or like laser-based displays or other kinds of displays that can enable this to happen. Um, so what I'm working on is sort of this new spatial light modulator technology for holographic video. So um, this, is a, this is something that our group is kind of working on at the moment. And uh, basically the idea is, you know, some uh, using kind of a waveguide technique incorporated, incorporating with um, holographic kind of uh, uh, illumination schemes. Um, but the idea behind this is, you know, a lot of times we, when we look at uh, mixed reality displays or just augmented reality, you have the image being projected through the optic, right? But what if the optic itself is a display, right? So that's something that's really interesting to me. Um, instead of having to pump an image through and then be restricted to the optic, which gives you the narrow, narrow or whatever field of view, what if you make your entire optic the display and then send information through that? Um, so that's what we're working on right now. Um, obviously, improved computer vision is important and to enable better depth mapping. You can get away, actually, quite well with just um, a few kind of focal planes in your system um, like, and still have, have this kind of a nice kind of light field experience. Um, and so I think uh, um, what's important is, you know, what's the trade-off you want to give here? You want to have unlimited focal planes? You want to have one or two? Or how, how, can you, how do you do some, some other method to kind of enable that technology? Um, and then eye tracking, I think, is really cool, too, because uh, um, if you can just display information, you know, we're only where you're looking, like why do you need an entire display to project everywhere in your face, right? Um, that saves a lot of like, energy and power um, display needs. Um, and then lastly, uh, photonics manufacturing. I think uh, this is gonna be very critical to um, sort of looking at the next generation of AR dis systems, uh, looking at new technology that supports uh, manufacturing methods to enable that to happen. Um, so that's pretty much it, but I hope that kind of gives a nice overview of sort of this technology behind the AR, and I, well, you know, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to, you know, answer them whenever I work in this lab, so <laughs> I'll be here.